You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Libya Palace His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Royal Highnesses discussed the latest local, regional and international developments and affirmed the importance of Arab solidarity and cooperation, especially during the current security and economic challenges facing the region and the targeting of its safety and stability. The Royal Highnesses reviewed the initiatives that aim to revitalize the tourism sector and make it an essential pillar of the integrated economic system, highlighting Bahrain's touristic attractions. His Royal Highness uh, Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired today the weekly cabinet meeting in the presence of His Royal Highness the uh, Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Prime Minister directed service ministries to submit reports on meeting the needs of the citizens in areas that His Royal Highness is directed to visit. He stressed the importance of promptly implementing the citizens' needs in all cities and villages. His Royal Highness directed to inspect the citizens' complaints in Bori concerning practices that damage agricultural lands. He ordered the authorities concerned to intensify inspection campaigns and take the necessary regulatory and legal measures to stop such acts. The Premier noted the importance of protecting livestock from epidemics and diseases as well as providing laboratories to conduct the necessary tests and follow-up on the observations and complaints of breeders and cattle traders through contact with the authorities concerned. His Royal Highness also instructed the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism to tighten monitoring over food prices and imports and to prevent monopoly and collusion through so storing good goods and refraining from selling them to the public. The Cabinet noted the importance of the Jewelry Arabia exhibition held under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister in boosting trade and economy. In this context, the Prime Minister followed up on the exhibition and conference city project and directed to speed up its implementation. The Minister of Industry briefed the Cabinet on the preparations for the event. On the occasion of the Universal Children's Day, the Cabinet congratulated the children of the world and the children of Bahrain in particular, affirming that the government will continue its efforts to grant children all their rights and provide them with a safe environment and social welfare. The Cabinet affirmed that it will introduce legislations that will protect children and their rights. The cabinet welcomed the decisions of the extraordinary session of the Arab League Council held in Cairo at the ministerial level on the Iranian interventions and threats in the region. The cabinet denounced the hostile policies of Iran and its interventions in the internal affairs of Arab countries as well as its sponsorship of terrorism. It affirmed the necessity to end such interventions to rid the region of violence, sectarianism and instability and insecurity. The cabinet praised the initiative of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to call the meeting, which is one of many initiatives of Saudi Arabia to support support Arab solidarity and to increase the ability of the Arab world of addressing all dangers and threats.
The cabinet was briefed on the outcomes of the meeting by the Foreign Affairs Minister. The cabinet approved a memo that was submitted by the Coordination Committee headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister that aims at supporting commercial activity growth and encourage investment in the Kingdom through developing Sijilat system for commercial registration through offering more facilitation. The cabinet followed up on the implementation of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's directives of transferring aircraft fuel tanks from their current location in Arad to Bahrain International Airport. The Minister of Oil and the Minister of Transportation and Communication briefed the cabinet on the steps taken to carry out the tasks which include establishing Bahrain Airport Company for aircraft fuel and cooperating with international consulting companies to provide designing and administrative services. The cabinet approved the renewal of the agreement between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Nations Education, Science and Culture Organization UNESCO regarding the Arab Regional Center for International Heritage for an additional period of two years. The cabinet referred to the Ministry Committee for Legal Affairs a memorandum of understanding on cooperation in the field of renewable energy between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of India. The cabinet also approved four proposals regarding the development of tourism supporting events and programs, expansion of main roads, service sector inspectors and meat selling in stores and restaurants. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Libya Palace the Ambassador of Oman to the Kingdom Abdullah bin Rashid Al Mdalwi. His Royal Highness hailed the relations between Bahrain and Oman and the development of witnesses in various fields as a result of the support of the two countries' leaders to enhance bilateral cooperation and achieve the aspirations of their people. His Royal Highness noted Oman's advancement and prosperity, which comes as a result of the vision of the Sultan of Oman, His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said, affirming the Kingdom's keenness on strengthening cooperation to boost development efforts. His Royal Highness received the invitation to the celebration ceremony organized by the Omani Embassy commemorating the Omani National Day. The Omani Ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his keenness on enhancing bilateral relations, hailing the status of the bahrain omani relations, which reflect the deep-rooted ties, wishing the Kingdom further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Libya Palace the newly appointed Ambassador of France to Bahrain, Sisi Longe. His Royal Highness praised the deep-rooted cooperation, relationship and friendship ties between Bahrain and France, which are based on a foundation of mutual respect and understanding, as well as joint coordination concerning many regional and international affairs. His Royal Highness noted the development of bilateral cooperation at all levels, which reflect the two countries' keenness on bolstering relations to meet their common interests. The Prime Minister wished Ambassador Longe success in carrying out her diplomatic mission to further strengthen bilateral cooperation, particularly in economy, commerce and investment. His Royal Highness wished France and its people further progress and prosperity. For her part, Ambassador Langer expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for supporting the Bahraini-French relations and affirmed her country's keenness on bolstering bilateral relations, praising the prosperity and development of the Kingdom in various fields. Government officials today held the first of a series of coordination meetings focused on strategic infrastructure projects across the kingdom. During the meeting, the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Mohammed bin Ibrahim al highlighted that under the directives of His Majesty the King, citizens remain at the heart of development efforts, stressing that the principles of sustainability, competitiveness and fairness, which underpin Bahrain's Vision 2030, continue to drive every aspect of the kingdom's sustainable development. The Minister also highlighted that government-led initiatives are wholly focused on improving citizens' living standards and 
Jackson noted that His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's continued support is central to the success and delivery of effective development projects. The Cabinet Minister went on to outline the underlying goals for the upcoming Government Action Plan, which includes strengthening efforts to redefine the role of the public sector from the primary engine of economic growth into a private sector enabler and regulator, particularly facilitating innovation and increasing competitiveness and continuing to invest in citizens and further improving their living standards. A great initiative gathering many government officials to cooperate and work together in extensive workshops to share their expertise after studying their current strategies areas of development to define the underlying goals for the upcoming government action plan. To set the priority, to evaluate the impact, to inform us on the achievability or the possibility of achieving the program set. We don't want to deal with a wish list. We want to deal with a pragmatic program which we want to transfer it, transfer it into an actual uh, timeline with action plan. Most of the executives of the government are, are here today. We are brainstorming. It's a think tank type of thing. We, have, uh, we are dealing with the infrastructure. It's an infrastructure committee. I, I'm heading one of them. Uh, we are discussing the initiatives of uh, eight uh, government entities. Those eight government entities, they've forwarded their projects, are around 102 projects. Uh, we are putting forward the strategies and the initiatives behind those and all the programs that will support those initiatives to attain and uh, uh, achieve the objectives. The country needs to recover the cost of all the infrastructure to be implemented in the future. And this will not be put on the citizen, but it will be put on the uh, commercial and industrial part only. Uh, we discussed today how can we make it easy for the investors to come to Bahrain and invest, whether that's an industry part or it's a commercial. Discussions focused on strengthening efforts to redefine the role of the public sector from being the primary engine of economic growth into a private sector enabler and regulator, particularly across tourism, logistics, manufacturing, ICT and financial service sectors, aiming to facilitate innovation, increase competitiveness and continue investing in citizens and further improve their living standards different uh, projects for instance the Ministry of Transportation have uh, the, the new uh, bridge causeway uh, uh, the train rail um, uh, the new exhibition center uh, developing uh, beach fronts uh, in terms of Bahrain Tourism Exhibition Authority so th th there's many projects in different scales looking at uh, new legislations to ease uh, for foreign direct investments looking at uh, cooperation between the private sector and the governmental sector all of um, the projects that have been submitted to see how we can uh, make sure that they are fundable, um, how to improve our uh, workings in, in, in government, how to provide the better services, how these services will event, um, eventually um, come up and give you a better uh, services for the uh, Bahraini uh, population. How to diverse uh, the economy uh, of Bahrain. Uh, uh, the importance of the infrastructure also uh, to um, attract uh, the investment uh, inside and outside uh, the country. Officials mainly reviewed recommendations on infrastructure strategies that had been submitted by a number of government ministries and departments. Moreover, plans for enhancing public services, mainly housing, health care, education services and the transformation of government services into e-services, enhancing legislative and regulatory frameworks in order to strengthen Bahrain's international competitiveness, the simplification of government procedures, in addition to the continued introduction of substantial infrastructure investment worth over 32.5 billion US dollars, have all been widely examined and final outcomes are awaiting approval. Reporting for Bahrain International, Amheba Abdurrafor.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the extraordinary session of the Arab League Council held in Cairo at the ministerial level to discuss the Iranian interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries. The Foreign Minister expressed his sincere thanks to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for its invitation to the meeting, stressing that it is not the first initiative of Saudi Arabia to push forward joint Arab action to be the mechanism that address any threats to Arab countries from any side. He stressed that Iran poses a great threat to the region, pointing out that the missile that targeted the city of Riyadh is not the the first attack on Saudi Arabia by parties working for Iran and the region such as the Houthi militias. He added that the bombing of an oil pipeline in Bahrain is part of a series of attacks that killed many and wounded thousands of security men and citizens and all these crimes were committed by Iranian agents in the region. The foreign minister warned that the serious escalation of Iranian practices in the region requires maintaining Arab national security. He said that Iran is smuggling arms to region terrorists such as Hezbollah wings based in Lebanon, Iraqi Syria and in other places. The minister stressed that this is a great challenge to national Arab security, which is exposed to a state that is trying to clearly overthrow and control countries and does not hesitate to take any action to reach this goal. The foreign minister expressed hope that the joint Arab action will be more effective in establishing security and stability in the region and in maintaining Arab national security. Following the meeting, the Arab League Council issued a statement strongly condemning the ballistic missile launched from Yemen towards Riyadh by the Iranian-backed Houthi militia, considering it an attack on Saudi Arabia and a threat to national Arab security. The Council affirmed Saudi Arabia's right to defend its territory. It also expressed its support to the measures to be taken against Iranian violations within the framework of international legitimacy. The Council also condemned all acts of terrorism carried out by Iran in Bahrain, most recently the bombing of an oil pipeline, which was a terrorist act by a group backed by Iran and the Iranian Revolution. Revolutionary Guard. It also denounced and condemned Iran's continuous interference in Bahrain's internal affairs by supporting terrorism, training terrorists, smuggling arms and explosives, inciting sectarian strife, issuing statements at various levels to destabilize security, order and stability, and establishing terrorist groups in the kingdom funded and trained by the Iranian Revolutionary Guards and the Lebanese terrorist Hezbollah. The Council supported the Kingdom of Bahrain in all its measures and steps to combat terrorism and terrorist groups in order to maintain its security and stability. It also praised the efforts of the security services in Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, which has been able to thwart many terrorist schemes and arrest members of terrorist organizations entrusted with the implementation of these schemes supported by the Iranian Revolutionary Guards and Lebanese terrorist Hezbollah. The Council condemned the policy of the Iranian government and its ongoing interference in Arab affairs, which would fuel sectarian conflicts and its demands to stop supporting and financing militias and armed parties in the Arab countries, especially their interventions in Yemen. Meanwhile, the Arab Ministerial Quartet Committee on following up the crisis with Iran as well as ways to confront its interference in internal affairs of Arab states, which includes Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Egypt, held a meeting in Cairo today in the presence of the Secretary General of the Arab League. A very good evening. You're watching the Business News in Bahrain International with me, Hiba Abdul Ghafoor. Bahrain Oil Share Index has closed at 1,266.02 points, marking a decrease of 6.07 points below the previous closing. The decrease was in the commercial banks and the hotels and tourism sectors, and investors mainly traded in the investment sector, representing 56% of the total value of traded shares. 61 equity transactions took place, including 2,664,379 shares, worth 472,622 Bahraini dinars. The Central Bank of Bahrain announced that the monthly issue of Sukuk al Salam Islamic Securities has been subscribed by 100%. Subscriptions worth 43 million Bahraini dinars were received for the issue, which carries a maturity of 91 days. The expected return on the issue is 2.72%, compared to 2.6% for the previous issue. This is the issue number 199 of the short-term Sukuk al Salam series. Growth in the non-oil sector of Bahrain's economy reached an annual pace of 4.7% in the first half of 2017, ahead of the 4% non-oil growth recording during 2016 as a whole, according to the latest Bahrain Economic Quarterly Report published by the Bahrain Economic Development Board. The robust, strong non-oil growth figures were almost entirely due to activity in the private sector, underscoring the strength of of structural and counter-cyclical growth drivers in the Bahraini economy. 
non-oil growth in the first half of 2017 was broadcasted with particularly strong momentum observed in sectors such as hotels and restaurants, social and personal services and financial services, which all expanded more than 7% year-on-year in the period. Additionally, the transportation and communications and real estate and business activities sectors all posted solid figures. Overall, real economic growth in the kingdom reached an annual pace of 3.4% for the first half of the year, which marked a small further improvement over the 3.2% pace of growth posted during 2016 as a whole.